Cohen. Mr. Cohen from Tennessee, excuse me. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Massey and I have had discussions in the past about good guys with guns, um, good people with guns, but good guys is what they kind of say. And he says good guys with guns often are there and they protect people. Ms. Jackson Lee asked you about a bunch of stabilizing uh, that were used, stabilizers that were used in mass shootings. So there, there's a history of stabilizing guns or rifles, whatever, being used in mass shootings. Is that true? Short, I think the questions were, I took them to be about short-barreled rifles um, and, and equipped with stabilizing braces. Okay. Have you ever heard of a person with a short, stabilized rifle, whatever, being, uh, coming and using it to defend somebody, a good guy with a gun? Um, I, I don't know, but these are lawful weapons, and I assume that people who follow the rules use them for all the lawful purposes that, the, uh, that they can be used for. Do you have to put your gun together to stabilize it, or is it you kind of take it around? It's like a well, I, uh, when, when people, basically the rule deals with this situation, which is there are short-barreled rifles that are sold in one piece. And then what happened in the market was people uh, designed uh, stabilizing braces that could be attached to large frame pistols so that basically you were making the exact same weapon in two pieces. Right. Uh, those weapons are not banned. They have never been banned. There, it, Congress just determined there was increased uh, uh, controls that had to be imposed on those. But to the best of your knowledge, nobody's ever used one of those to defend somebody. I, I, I wouldn't know. We, we Mostly they're used by we, people who go out with the intent to kill people. Well, we don't. Uh, seek to investigate and monitor the conduct of law-abiding citizens who are using firearms for lawful purposes. That's not what we do at ATF. President Trump asked ATF to work with the bump stocks, right? That happened in the last administration, that is correct, after the Las Vegas massacre. And, and Mr. Jordan made a point about some issues. He said it was not passed by the House and the Senate and signed by the President. That wasn't passed by the House and the Senate and signed by the President, was it? It was just Mr. Trump asked that it be done. My understanding is those rules were issued and our legal papers, there's hundreds of pages with our position on this that are public, was passed under the same rulemaking authority that Congress gave under the National Firearms Act. Do you have any knowledge of whether or not there were members of Congress who wrote to the ATF after Mr. Trump did this and said, this is a usurpation of our power, and we're up on this hill and overlooking the executive. There, there is litigation with a massive administrative record. There are letters uh, from uh, interested groups and members of Congress. I don't know, but that would be the place to look to see about that. Memphis has a crime problem and a gun problem, and I have met with uh, your representatives in Nashville and Memphis both, the Nashville Field Division, and we appreciate what they're doing, and the police department appreciates what they're doing, too. They help them in quite a few cases. Uh, the uh, most crimes in Memphis are committed with handguns. And recently I've heard about Glock switches that have been confiscated in Memphis at the port and recovered by Memphis police. Can you tell us what a Glock switch is and why they're so dangerous and what the FDA, ATF is doing about them? Glock switches are small devices. They actually can look innocuous and sometimes blend with the firearm, but they convert a semi-automatic pistol into an unlawful fully automatic machine gun. They override some of the functions to do that. Um, and I have met with chiefs around the country. I think one chief, I remember him saying to me very vividly when I asked what the problems are, he says, it's raining Glock swishes. Um, so, you know, if you're executing a search warrant as a police officer uh, and you're knocking police with the warrant, in that time it took me to do that, now the person on the other side of the door might be able to fire 40 rounds uh, through the door. Uh, it's an extremely dangerous situation for the American public and for law enforcement. How are Glock switches regulated? They're unlawful. So machine gun conversion devices under the National Firearms Act are unlawful. Um, and they are hard to detect. They are flooding it into our community. People are printing them on 3D printers. It is a significant public safety threat. And we are working as hard as we can with what we have with our local partners to try and get ahead of that. But it's hard. So that's part of what you get is an increase. What you do is you have to look after Glock switches too. Uh, of course, <clears throat> when people... Let me ask you this. We only have a few seconds left. The, the red flag laws have been discussed in the last bill, we, the quote-unquote bipartisan uh, gun bill. Uh, we had uh, some incentives for states to have red flag laws. Does the administration, would the administration support a federal red flag law? And uh, uh, again, uh, 
I, I, I think, you know, the president has been clear on the various things that he has called on Congress to do. Uh, as ATF director, my job is to take what comes out of that debate and squeeze every last bit of public safety out of it. Thank you for your service and to the gentlemen and the ladies that work with you, and God bless them. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Johnson, is recognized.